Okay, welcome to this uh, session on logistics. Uh, my colleague uh, Ms. Jayashila Gaitonde and I would be presenting to you the logistics which are expected of you and uh, which would be taking place in IIT Bombay as well and as well as the most important thing, uh, the budget. We will be presenting the budget to you. Uh, there are a number of you who have already uh, listened to my uh, presentation before, but there are several of you who have uh, not been here before and uh, who would have uh, some confusion as to what their roles of are as uh, workshop coordinators and what is the difference between a remote center coordinator, what is a remote center coordinator supposed to do and what is a workshop coordinator's role. So I would like to start uh, with a little bit of uh, history for those who have not been here before. Uh, I would be talking about uh, the uh, project with some history, the workshops, the methodology, people, the team which is expected at uh, the remote centers, then uh, the coordinators workshop which is uh, going on at the moment, then the logistics of course, AVU, Moodle, post main workshop and funds. The formal name for this project is uh, Empowerment of Students and Teachers Through Synchronous and Asynchronous Instruction. This was initiated by Professor Fatak in 2009. Actually, distance education in IIT Bombay was initiated by Professor Fatak. We started, uh, you know, interacting with uh, engineering college teachers in 2009. And at that moment, uh, we had about 35 remote centers across the country. We used to use the EduSat. Because of the EduSat, we were very limited. Only those colleges who had the EduSat infrastructure could participate in our programs. But then in 2010, EduSat crashed and we had to look for a, an alternative. And at the same time, Amrita University was had just come up with this uh, new software called AVU, uh, under, that, that is also under the National Mission on Education. And we tied up with them and uh, in 2010, we completely moved over to AVU, which also gave us uh, sort of a freedom to go to whichever college uh, we wanted, whichever college which could uh, sort of put up this infrastructure that we needed. In 2013, as you can understand, in, in 2009, uh, since we had very few colleges, the number of participants that we could uh, reach out to was also very little. But then we had a very successful run till 2012. In 2012, the ministry decided that because we had been very successful, they decided to give us uh, funds for phase two. And in 2013, we started uh, the phase two with IIT Kharagpur. And we have a mandate of uh, training about 1,50,000 teachers in 15 workshops over the next two years. Now one year is already over, so two years. So we have conducted 21 workshops so far uh, since 2009. 21 including all uh, coordinator workshops. This is the 22nd workshop that we are conducting. Our mandate from uh, the uh, ministry is that uh, we train the teachers in core engineering subjects. We have uh, done basic subjects like basic electronics, thermodynamics and computer programming, etc. But, but we've also done some very unusual topics like uh, FOSSI, solar photovoltaics, writing effective conference papers, which was a very successful workshop and uh, research methods in education technology. Research methods in e education technology was the workshop that sort of triggered off our phase two. We had a record number of participants attending that workshop and that is where uh, the ministry said that uh, since we have uh, so much of uh, expertise in doing these workshops, we should go in for the second phase. And so far, as uh, you can see, the workshops have been attended by over 65,000 participants and uh, they have been distributed across 342 remote centers. Now the methodology is that we ask for applications from various colleges. Right now there is a huge uh, waiting list of colleges wanting to be our uh, remote centers. We identify institutes across the country which could act as good remote centers. They should have proximity to a number of other uh, engineering colleges. They should have good infrastructure. They should have good uh, faculty to send here for training as workshop coordinators. 
In the early phase, since we did not have any uh, experience in conducting uh, workshops across the country in the, in the distance mode, we decided to have certain roles across uh, the remote centers which would, uh, who would help us, uh, who would act as our uh, representatives in various centers. So we came up with these uh, roles, the remote center coordinator and the workshop coordinator. Now the remote center coordinator remains constant across workshops. He or she is solely in charge of all the infrastructure, all the logistics that needs to be taken care of. And the workshop coordinator is subject specific. Whenever we announce a particular workshop, uh, the uh, remote center coordinator along with the head of the institute identifies a faculty member who can act as a workshop coordinator and that person is nominated like all of you have been. So, AVU as I said is a very, very important component of our uh, entire methodology. This is the most important factor that is used to communicate between uh, IIT Bombay and all the other remote centers. Uh, most of you might know that uh, we conduct a very rigorous uh, testing sh uh, schedule just before the workshop and uh, we have also cancelled remote centers when the uh, testing has not been up to the mark or the infrastructure has not been up to the mark. It is uh, found that many centers do try to cheat some at some point but it is their loss because uh, they are marketing their workshops under the you know the name of IIT Bombay with in collaboration and so and so uh, remote center and people gather there and pe when people do not get a good audio or a video what is the point? I mean there is no workshop without a good AVU connectivity. So make sure you tell your uh, remote center coordinators and AVU coordinator that uh, the AVU connectivity has to be absolutely perfect. Now the second most important component is the Moodle. I talked about synchronous and asynchronous modes earlier. So Moodle is one of uh, the modes. Uh, this is a learning management system. All of you are now familiar with uh, Moodle. Uh, we use this extensively for uh, discussions, there are discussion forums, there are ways and methods of uh, uploading assignments and uh, quizzes, feedback, everything. So we will be using Moodle very, very extensively. So please do make sure that you are totally familiar with it. So the logistics for the main workshop is that uh, I have passed around a document which details uh, the remote center coordinator and the workshop coordinator roles. Uh, I know there are there is a lot of confusion in centers uh, about what exactly the remote center coordinator is supposed to do and what the workshop coordinator is supposed to do. So I hope that these uh, this particular document helps you in delineating exactly what the difference is. And please do share this with your uh, head of the institute and the remote center coordinator. Also, I will be sending it in a uh, soft copy a little later on so that it reaches all the concerned uh, people. Uh, we advertised for this workshop uh, some time ago in uh, the newspapers. So uh, that has been taken care of by IIT. You have already been given brochures for uh, advertisement. So I uh, request you to uh, pass them on to the neighboring colleges and make sure that the workshop is well advertised. Then uh, the online registration will be on the IIT Bombay uh, NME ICT website just like yours. Uh, we do not want you to take care of any uh, registration hassle, so we will be doing it on our own. And uh, the registration will begin on 26th May and it will be open till 30th June. So I am sure a month is... Uh, quite a comfortable uh, period for you to uh, advertise. We uh, have already sent a link to the remote center coordinators asking for the number of people you can accommodate in your remote center coordinate uh, in your remote centers. So that's the seating capacity link which has been already sent to the uh, RCC and I request you all to please go back and make sure that your RCC has sent us the information that is necessary. Now the uh, once the registration begins and people start being approved and confirmed, they will be asked to provide a letter of approval from uh, head of their institutes. Again, uh, let me reiterate the point that this workshop is fully funded, so it is open only for working teachers 
and that is the reason we need this letter of approval from the heads of the institutes. Uh, we need to know that uh, this person, uh, the participant is employed in a particular college and that the institute is willing to release him for this period without any other uh, duties being assigned to him. That is the intent of the uh, permission letter. The shortlist uh, will uh, appear once the registration is closed. Of course, we will be, uh, the, the team will be uh, shortlisting as and when the registrations come because uh, we will be looking at uh, permission letters as and when uh, people register. So there will be a sh shortlist which is being continuously generated. We will also send you the uh, shortlist to the remote center coordinator and to the workshop coordinator with all the contact details of the participants. So once you get the list, it is up to you to uh, follow up to ask people whether, uh, I mean people would have already uh, informed us if they want accommodation or not. If you are in a position to offer accommodation, please do get in touch with those people. We will give you the names of people who have asked for accommodation and things like that. Now the main workshop I have uh, said before about the rigorous testing schedule for AVU. I cannot stress this point enough. This is the crux of a successful workshop. Make sure that the infrastructure at your uh, institute is absolutely in prime condition so that the workshop experience is absolutely successful at your workshop, at, at your center. Uh, by the way, uh, my colleague Sajan Dikshit has also uh, uh, come up with this five star uh, rating system. So the AVU testing will also decide on the star that your uh, remote center gets and uh, after a certain point when the stars are converted into a certain rating, the centers with the lowest ranking will either be uh, suspended temporarily till they improve their uh, infrastructure or completely deactivated. So this point is very, very important. Uh, we will send you soft copies of the Creative Commons license and the permission slip. You have all been uh, given the Creative Commons license. This is so that uh, we release whatever we have recorded here, whatever we'll, we will be recording during the main workshop, everything we will be releasing in the open source. So the participant should not have any objection. So we need a permission slip from him or her. Now the registration, though you, you would have got a uh, short list of all the participants who would be coming to your center, you would need to conduct a registration in the morning, just making sure that everybody has come or not. You will be giving him the schedule, workshop kit and things like that. The inaugural and uh, validatory functions will be held from IIT Bombay. You are welcome to invite any of your local dignitaries. Uh, unfortunately, because the number of uh, remote centers is large, we will not be uh, giving or going over uh, virtually to any workshop, uh, sorry, any uh, center. We will, uh, in case you need to, you, your dignitary wants to speak, you should intimate the AVU team earlier and uh, you should uh, request your dignitary to make it very, very brief because there are so many other remote centers. We would be providing you uh, with a list of uh, email IDs and phone numbers. These are your helplines. Please make uh, use of the helplines very judiciously. Do not call the administration to ask about the modal IDs. They would not be able to help you. People often call me for some uh, AVU issues. Again, I wouldn't be able to help you. So make sure that you understand which uh, email ID and which number is for what function and use it accordingly. Uh, we would be using the Moodle for uh, conducting quizzes and solving assignments. So uh, make sure that your uh, participants have the necessary internet connectivity and uh, machines for the uh, quizzes and uh, feedback session which will be on the last day. So uh, we will be using Moodle. We have a very extensive uh, feedback uh, form. If any of you have attended our previous workshops, you would know that we have a very extensive feedback form and the participant uh, is required to fill this up. This is absolutely mandatory. So make sure that you have uh, the required infrastructure for your participants to fill up the feedback form. Now this uh, I'm assuming is the tentative schedule, 9.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. with breaks at 11 and 1 and 3.30. 
and uh, we will be mailing you this uh, schedule once it's finalized and it, it, it is also it will also be put up on the Moodle and will be visible to all the participants and uh, to you all as well. Uh, now we come to the post main workshop, you, uh, the participants will be given a final assignment which uh, they will do in groups. It is your duty to uh, get your pa uh, participants to form groups and uh, the participants will need to submit this uh, assignment, they will be given a, a period of two weeks which would also in turn give us the time to look at their attendance, to look at their uh, you know assignments and things like that and make uh, certificates. Coordinators uh, need to monitor the assignment submission. There is another thing that I want the coordinators to understand very clearly here, you are completely in charge of the attendance. Attendance is a major issue in uh, all centers. In many centers we find that your own colleagues uh, sign up for the registration. Uh, sign up for the workshop and uh, are actually not present. I have personally been visiting a large number of remote centers, surprise visits and we have found that just the AVU coordinator and uh, the sysadmin sys or the support staff is sitting there and the entire hall is empty. We can see you on AVU. We will be monitoring you on AVU. Please remember that. So, there has to be full attendance. I can understand an emergency like a death or an illness or some such thing or a viva or something, but not beyond that. Please tell your participants very clearly that if they have a wedding to attend or some such thing, they should not attend the workshop. We expect full 100% attendance. The ministry is paying for this. This is a funded workshop and we will, we are very strict about this. And you will be required to send us attendance four times a day, four sessions. You will be, uh, we will be giving you either a link or you will be asked to send it to e-outreach or whatever, but you will be asked to send us attendance four times a day and also a random picture of your classroom. So we are getting more and more, you know, careful about this. We are getting reminders from the ministry that this cannot, I mean we have been giving, giving them reports about the colleges that we have visited and this will have to be curbed somewhere. And you as workshop coordinators are responsible for this, please remember this. We will be distributing participation certificates again based on attendance and on their assignment submissions. And uh, if Professor Benesis thinks any assignment is uh, absolutely excellent, maybe we could also think about uh, certificate of excellence, it is to be uh, considered, not mandatory, but some faculty uh, do uh, give this. The workshop coordinator and uh, the uh, faculty from IIT Bombay will be using uh, the Moodle to interact with uh, participants. These include any queries that are raised, there will be a forum. And uh, finally, we will be publishing contents like all the slides, all the assignments, quizzes, lecture videos, everything on the portal in open source. Now this is our uh, project team, uh, Jayashila Gaitonde who looks after the funds and accounts, Sajjan Dikshit, uh, Sushant is his second in command, he looks after the e-studio and AVU and trust me, Sajjan Dikshit is a very, very strict guy, so make sure that your AVU is in complete order. My team, Mahindra Parmar, Kanan, Rachna and uh, Sandeep, then Abhilash who looks after the system administration and Ajali Suresh and uh, the rest of the software team who work behind the scenes to maintain the registration page and that's a mammoth task to say the least. So thank you all, thank you to MHRD Government of India, Amrita University for AVU. Uh, Indian Society for Technical Education who also certifies our participants and of course to all the remote centers. Thank you very much. Good morning everybody. We will now see the financial support for the main workshop. The procedure can be seen in uh, three steps, fund transfers by IIT Bombay, final settlement both by remote centers. For fund transfers we need the bank details of our remote centers. Most of the remote centers have already given their bank details. They need not submit again unless there, there are any changes. The new centers will have to provide their bank details in this format, their bank name, 
branch name, bank account number, bank account name, IFSC code and MICR code. The bank details have to be submitted online on this website. The bank account has to be your official bank account of the institute. It should not be in any personal name. We will accept your bank details without any responsibility. That means IIT Bombay will not be responsible for its authenticity or any discrepancies arising out of your bank account. We will start the fund transfers after the registration is closed and we will complete them before the main workshop starts. After your account is credited, we will update the details on the uh, web portal and uh, the RCC and the institute head will receive an auto-generated mail from IIT Bombay regarding the details of fund transfer. Your remote center will have to check your bank account for the amount credited and acknowledge a receipt on our website. Now we come to the next step that is fund utilization. Fund utilization has to be strictly as per the sanction budget and the utilization guidelines provided by IIT Bombay. Interhead fund adjustment will not be permitted. This is the budget for the main workshop. It is in two parts, fixed cost and a variable cost. Fixed cost, this chart is self-explanatory. The first subhead under fixed cost is honorarium to uh, various uh, team members. Honorarium payments should be by checks or by bank transfers only. It should not be paid by cash. The next subhead under fixed cost is miscellaneous expenses. This is given for the registration kits to be purchased for the participants. Stationery, postage, printing, photocopy charges, chartered accountant fees and other workshop related contingent expenses. Institute expense budget, this is rupees 10,000 per remote center. This amount has to be transferred to your institute account for the common facilities provided by your institute such as infrastructure, electricity, water, telephones, etc. The next part is the variable cost. Under variable cost, we have food accommodation and travel reimbursement. All remote centers will have to arrange lunch and tea for their participants and also to their workshop team members. Accommodation for outstation participants may be arranged if available. Travel reimbursement is also for outstation participants. The criteria for TA reimbursement is that the distance between the participants institute to the remote center has to be more than 100 kilometers one way. Each remote center will calculate their own variable cost depending on their number of confirmed participants. So the total workshop cost per remote center will be their fixed cost entitlement as shown in the budget sheet plus the actual variable cost. Now we come to the last step that is the final settlement. This is a post main workshop activity at remote centers. All remote centers will prepare final settlements in the formats provided by IIT Bombay. There will be two main documents, grant utilization certificate and receipt and payment statement. Both these documents have to be printed on your institute letterhead and they are to be signed by both the coordinators that is remote center coordinator and workshop coordinator. The final settlement has to be certified by a chartered accountant. CA certification is mandatory and this is our audit requirement. The final settlement has to be submitted along with the original bills within one month after the workshop gets over. Final settlement is subject to audit by IIT Bombay. The certificates of remote center coordinator and workshop coordinator will be released only after the final settlement is complete. The sanction budget with utilization guidelines in details and the settlement document formats will be mailed to you well in advance before the main workshop starts. This is our accounts team. You can send your fund related queries at this email id workshopfund at csc.iitb.ac.in. You can call us at 2576-4989. Thank you. And if you have any queries, uh, you may please go ahead. Two days back, I received a mail from IIT Khadakpur regarding the fluid mechanics workshop that is going on right now, that the uh, variable cost should be uh, restricted to only number of participants and 
the team members are not to be included. And in this budget, you have also mentioned about the team members. Variable so for food? For food. No, we give it to the workshop team members also. So will it be different for IIT Khadakpur and IIT Bombay? I don't know why they have changed, but the last time they had not changed well. Right? Yes, no? last work in last workshop they had included team members as well, but this time they are saying that it's only for participants. In fact, it becomes difficult if we exclude the team members because they have to accompany them to the lunch venue and all and we say that you don't eat there. It's not proper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Prerogative of IIT Kharagpur to decide who they want to include and who they don't want to include, but we have included. So uh, for that particular query, you'll have to ask the IIT Kharagpur people. Just because I'm asking just because it's a partner institute and the project is the same. Yeah. Sure, but these minute details they will uh, they will be able to answer. Okay, thank you. And I'm in this workshop, uh, the tablets are being used, will be used for quiz or not? No, they okay. will not be used. I'd like to clarify one more thing. Uh, when you have teaching assistants, mm -hmm. teaching assistants cannot become participants. This one question is asked to us all the time, so I'm just clarifying it here. There are two different roles, teaching assistant and a participant, they cannot be the same. So please tell your teaching assistants not to register and you will be required to send us a list of your teaching assistants. Teaching assistant, the number of teaching assistants is totally dependent upon how many uh, participants you have at your center. Is there any uh, honorarium for account person? From support staff you can give. From the support staff, okay. There is no special dedicated uh, honorarium. Many times what we uh, face is that they are doing all these account statements, they are preparing all these account statements and they are demanding it. So you can give from support staff. Okay, thank you. Or you can ask your uh, institute head to give some amount from the institute overheads. Okay. That amount is kept aside for that. Uh, you had asked us to bring the laptops. It was uh, not useful so much but wait and there is a security problem also yes uh, i understand but we also have a institute full of summer interns at the moment we were not sure whether uh, the labs would be empty okay we at the last moment we got the labs okay. at, at that mo at that time it was too late for us to inform you not to bring okay okay, so. okay sir. madam yes what is the eligibility criteria for participants like polytechnic polytechnic lectures and uh, are eligible? Polytechnic teachers are eligible. In fact, this whole uh, cyber security workshop, uh, one of the reasons we are doing it is to reach out to uh, polytechnic teachers also. And what about E and E department lectures who are handling a communication network in? Uh, yes, they are, they are eligible. All other branches like electronics? Yes. System administration. System administration. Sys ads are uh, not faculty, uh, but some of the tools are very useful. Yes, they can attend, but I will not be able to uh, give them any funds. They can attend the workshop. From your institute, you can make some special arrangements for them to attend. Okay. But uh, no funds can be spent upon them. So no certificates and no uh, other you know food and uh, kits and stuff like that. I think uh, this course is also relevant to system administrators to some extent. Yes. So we'll figure something out for that. Yeah, right yeah. now it is specifically faculty, but we'll figure out if we can somehow yeah. accommodate that set of people. Sure. When can TA be a student? You mentioned about only the yes. faculty member. Students, uh, third year, fourth year students can be your TAs. Thank you. Can they attend the workshop? They can attend the workshop, but no funds to be spent in any way. And more importantly, they should in no way hinder the participants' uh, involvement in the workshop, Quest which, which includes question answers. Uh, Ma'am, uh, technically speaking, I mean, is it any possibility to have a contact person so over here while we installing the labs in our remote centers? We can definitely arrange an, uh, a sort of a AVU session with our system administrators and the remote centers. Okay, what, what my suggestion is, if you give us something like contact persons and their email IDs or contact numbers, definitely we will shoot a problems to them when we have technically any snag in the institute. Yeah, when I share the helpline uh, uh, information, I'll be sharing system administrators uh, numbers also. Yeah, it's a really great help for us. Our teachers teaching in the BCS section, Bachelor of Computer Application sections are eligible for this workshop. 
uh, I guess in this case we will allow them, right? If you allow uh, polytechnic teachers, then I think BCA teachers should be allowed. BCA is uh, fine. Fine. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Faculties who are teaching, I mean, in BE, undergraduates, and doing post-graduation in our college, those who are TA, can be part of participants? I just said TA cannot be a participant. The, a person can do only one role no, at no. a time. Uh, what I'm saying, actually, uh, the teachers were teaching in our undergraduate uh, students but they are doing me in the same organization yes yes yeah okay if they are already teaching then they can be participants okay uh, ma'am there are certain research organizations around our city and they are interested in mainly two workshops computer networking and the cyber security workshop yes your uh, colleague had already raised that last uh, in the last workshop and i have been waiting for some communication but nothing has come okay. so i need to be i mean they need to co co contact us they need to approach us but nothing has come of the research organization people i okay. know that which one you are talking about you are talking yeah. about rr cat but they need yeah. to approach us okay uh, madam, uh, I have one doubt regarding the number of TAs. In the beginning, we are not having the to exit to know number of the participant. So, when we have to decide this number of teaching assistant? Oh, we can wait for the first two days. Two days, I think, is enough for you to understand how many participants you will have. But when this number of uh, TAs, we have to decide. Uh, you and have we have to, to send the details also. You have to give me a list based on the initial uh, list that is published. But you also please tell your TAs that we'll wait for two days. If, it, uh, if your number reduces drastically, then we can't afford to pay for a huge number of TAs. Okay, so initially if any detail is not required to be sent. No. Ratio, what is the exit ratio means? Uh, if you are having the 50 participant, then what is the number of uh, TAs we have to assign? The budget sheet uh, shows you that there is one TA per 15, 15. participants. So that yes. is given. Okay. Uh, my question is, the Department of Electrical Engineering and the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering are eligible to attend this workshop as participants? Yes. Electrical? Yeah. Yes, they are. Okay, thank you. Yeah, just a comment about that. There are some areas in computer science like computer architecture, computer networks and even cyber security that can go both ways. They can go CS, they can go uh, IT, they can go electrical engineering, they can go electronics engineering. So in that way, uh, you know, just introducing artificial barriers makes no sense. Specifically, I would be interested in the tools to be installed as far as the laboratory stations are concerned. Yeah, we will tell you all of that uh, maybe in today's afternoon session, for example. The tools are primarily Wireshark, Nmap, Nessus, uh, Snot and Metasploit at the very least. Okay, and exactly how they will be installed and how they will be used will be informed to you in detail. Thank you, sir. Semester starting time in 10th July. So, we can have it on Saturday, Sunday also. There is only one Sunday in between. And from past experience, uh, we have found that everybody wants a Sunday off. What will life sciences people do? I don't know. Yeah, I think life science is a little too remote from this. Not life sciences, mathematics and physics. Um, I think we have to draw the line somewhere and unless there is a very, very solid case for including such people, I think we should not. Uh, if uh, we are expecting more than 20 participants in the workshop and you said that uh, TAs are not allowed to uh, register there. So for the 25 candidates, we require two TAs and they have not registered for that. And in the last two day, uh, first two days of the workshop, if we require only one TA, then what about the second is how can he be a participant of the workshop if you th if your number goes down drastically then on the second day i will accept your ta as a participant okay the one who is not working but you will have to identify suppose you have 25 participants you will have to identify two tas and keep them informed that such a thing could happen he will be allowed in the Two days. Yeah, I will give you two days only. All these slides will be having on Moodle? Yes. Okay. Not only the slides, but even the videos showing you how to use. So there are two things. One is installing all the tools. The second thing is using them. So we already have uh, videos on using them. 
Thank you. <coughs> Installation we will just tell you about in the afternoon. Here you have said that stay uh, uh, stay will be there for uh, per day 175 rupee. So will it be there for 10 days or 12 days? How many days it will be? 12 days. Uh, we will not go beyond 175. If uh, there are institutes here whose uh, rent or whose tariff is more than 175, they will have to collect it from the participant. We will not go beyond 175. If a person who is working as a RC coordinator and workshop co coordinator also, got separate remuneration or a single remuneration? Yeah, we have uh, both workshop coordinator and remote center coordinator, it is 20,000. The re remuneration is 20,000. Um, if you include it in this uh, uh, sheet, it will be better, otherwise accounts people give us a lot of trouble. This is just a outline of what would be, uh, what you should be doing. We will be sending you a detailed version just before the workshop. Ma'am, good morning ma'am. Actually, most of the colleges are going to have a closing time of 5 o'clock. You are extending the workshop as 9.30 to 5.30. The participants used to go by bus only. College bus only. So you please ask your college bus to leave at 5.30 instead. So if that is all, thank you very much.